In today's video, I'm joined by Chad Kruger from Nickelback. All right, Chad, what shall I build today? Look at this telegraph. All right, Chad, let's take a look. Nestled in the quaint Surrey countryside, if you ignore the M25 150 metres away, you can find Chatley Heath's semaphore tower. It's a pre-Victorian and vaguely steampunk solution to the ancient problem of quick communication over a long distance. Built in 1822 by the British Admiralty, it formed one link in a chain of 15 stations between London and Portsmouth on the south coast. Let's take a look at how it works. And don't worry, I haven't forgotten this is a Minecraft channel. One second. Yeah, that's better. On top of the building, there's a mast with two arms attached at pivots. The arms can rest at seven different positions each, allowing for 49 combinations, each of which can have some kind of meaning for communication. The semaphore stations will be placed on prominent hills and within line of sight of the next station, averaging about five miles apart. The configuration of the arms will be copied from one station to the next down the chain. Though it didn't work at night or in fog, on a good day with good visibility, a short message could be sent from London to Portsmouth in only two or three minutes, an incredible improvement over a person on a horse. It also didn't take a huge amount of personnel either. Each station was manned by one lieutenant who would operate the telescopes and one handyman who would operate the cranks to change the arm positions. Older solutions like beacons or even smoke signals worked for pre-arranged messages, but the semaphores could transfer any message you liked. For example, I doubt that the Admiralty would ever have sent this message back in 1830. Before we move on, let's take a look at how the message is encoded. For this system, which is what the British Admiralty used between 1816 and 1847, both the mechanism itself and the code that it uses to encode its messages were designed by this guy, Rear Admiral Sir Hume Popham. There are two main encoding methods. The more complex is a dictionary mode, where longer words and phrases, held in a code book, were shown as a sequence of several signs. You can tell this was for the Navy by what kind of phrases are in this code book from around the time. A simpler method is the alphabetical system, where the positions of the arms relate to letters, numbers and some control characters such as finish, arrays or fog. This table shows all of the arrangements. So, looking at these contemporary pictures of the semaphore stations, we can see that this watercolour of Pewley Hill Station is showing a Y, this one of Putney Heath Station an S, Putney Heath again showing an R, the semaphore on top of the Duke of York School, the preparative or group sign, one of the control characters, and finally a T showing on top of the Admiralty building itself. You get the idea. This is the system that was used on the Admiralty's semaphore route to Portsmouth, but it wasn't the only one in use. Even within Britain, ignoring the variety of systems in use throughout the continent, a mix of standards were used. Before adopting Popham's system in 1816, the Admiralty had used a different system developed by Reverend Lord George Murray. Instead of movable arms, it used rotating shutters in a frame. It was the most widespread network Britain ever had, with branches from London to Deal, Sheerness, Portsmouth, Plymouth and Yarmouth operating at various points between 1796 and 1816 following the fall of Napoleon. As well as the military semaphores, a variety of commercial semaphores also operated using different systems still. Lines included Hollyhead to Liverpool and Spurn Point to Hull. Anyway, enough history. How do you translate this to Minecraft? Rotation like I've been showing obviously isn't available in Minecraft, so I'll need a different approach. I opted for this. It's a wall of concrete powder where the arms are simply displayed in a different colour. To change the arm positions, the entire wall is dropped below the floor, edited and returned back into view. The diagonal positions do look a little bit janky, but they're perfectly readable. Let's take a look at the piston layout and the redstone that makes it work. Firstly, the sand has to be dropped. This just uses a basic flush trapdoor type setup. Next, the existing arm positions are reset by a set of 16 pistons. Since it's resetting to a blank canvas, it doesn't matter if we power all 16 pistons rather than just the necessary ones. They're triggered to power by a comparator reading a container block through the fallen concrete powder wall. Opposite to the 16 reset pistons, there are 16 equivalent pistons for setting the arm positions. Only the pistons corresponding to the positions set by the player are powered. We'll take a look at the player interface in a bit. Now the arms are set, the wall can be returned to the surface with these piston worms. The floor still needs to be inserted underneath the concrete powder though. This is done by powering the trapdoor circuit again. This works, but it also displaces the piston worm, so it's then pushed back into place by another set of reset pistons before the piston worm descends to the bottom, ready for the next player input. All in all, this takes about 10 seconds. A bit slower than a real deal, but I'm alright with that. The player sets the arm positions using two item frames and a button. 
The item frames select the arm positions and the button gets the machine started. I insisted it looked like this as it kind of matches the position indicators on the real semaphore stations. The signal strengths from the item frame are then converted into individual outputs using a red coder. The actual red coder design that I used is so janky that I won't encourage its use by explaining it, but here's a screenshot if you want to go and figure it out. However cool the semaphore was, there's no prizes for guessing why it's no longer in use. The stations closed on the 31st of December 1847, being replaced by electrical telegraph cables laid alongside the London and South Western Railways line from London down to Gosport, near Portsmouth. Despite initial fears that such an electrical system would be easily sabotaged, it proved a huge improvement over the optical designs and all the personnel were made redundant. Nice happy ending for you there. But maybe the semaphore can redeem itself. That railway line is still there. In fact, in the intervening 200 odd years, it's got closer to both ends of the semaphore line. So what if the fears of sabotage against the cable weren't unfounded and the cable did break? What would get your message the 100 kilometers or so between London and Portsmouth faster? Catching the train or sending the message by Minecraft semaphore over 100,000 blocks? Find out in part two, when and if I get round to making it, starring Soundtoom. I've recently hit a million views on the channel, so I'd like to thank everyone for watching. I'd also like to thank Soundtoom for his help and for driving to get all these outdoor shots used in the video. We touched grass.